Assalamu alaikum class and welcome back to this the second session of Europe the 1500s and beyond. In this section we will be dealing with slavery in the Americas. In order to understand the root of this issue uh, we first have to consider the European encounters with the Americas and how this led to the slave trade and how it profoundly altered Africa and the transatlantic populations. And of course we will also be, be dealing with the economy or the economical aspect of this topic. As you remember, we said the Spanish were the first to reach the New World. And uh, of course we do not have a lot of time to go through the details here, but it's enough to mention that the great civilizations that existed at that time in the Americas were pretty much decimated by the conquest of the Spanish. Here we will just mention two important uh, two important uh, civilizations that were virtually decimated. One was the conquest of the Aztecs, which is in modern-day Mexico, and this was carried out by the conquistador Hernán Cortés. Of course, the ruler of the Aztecs at the time was Moctezuma. And the other great civilization that was also decimated was the Incas in South America, which is in uh, modern day, which was in modern day uh, Bolivia and Peru. And this was conquered by the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro. And the ruler of the Incas at that time was Atahualpa. Now, there was obviously some consequences to the conquest of the Spanish and we will just mention a few here. One was the spread of European diseases such as smallpox and this was a turning point in the Americas and many of the Native American civilizations were completely destroyed. We can't overlook also, we can't overlook also the role of the Roman Catholic Church in the conquest because the church was given vast property and in fact they were pretty much involved in what was considered a, 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 another type of crusade um, to convert non-Christian people to Christianity and of course this was related to the previous crusades that took place against Islamic the, the Islamic world. Uh, now, um, it's worth mentioning a very important figure here who was Friar Bartolomeu de las Casas, or as he's known in Spanish, Bartolomé de las Casas, because he was uh, instrumental in convincing the church to establish the beginning of what became known as the slave trade. Uh, the excuse that was used that was used basically was to say that if the church would bring Africans from the uh, fr from Africa to the Americas to work, they would be in fact doing them a favor by saving their souls. Of course this is widely referred to as the black legend because we know pretty much what happened after when they got here. The Spanish, the treatment of the, the slaves and, and for that matter the Native Americans was pretty much unprincipled and very cruel. It was humane treatment. Of course the slave trade had its roots on the one hand in economic factors because the colonial economy of Spanish America was based uh, on exploitation. People were, were organized in different types of uh, in labors, 
in, in labor forces in order to extract the gold and silver and other wealth from the colonies to take back to Europe. Um, as we said, there were many events that took place, but here we will just focus on some of the most salient ones. We cannot overlook again the situation that took place in Brazil. The Treaty of Tordesillas gave the Portuguese control over Brazil, and the Brazilians, the Portuguese, established large cane, sugarcane estates, and also they were involved in the mining of gold. Incidentally, uh, Brazil uh, was one of the major importers of slaves from West Africa, and the slave trade, strangely enough, lasted in Brazil until the year 1888. The French were also involved, but to a lesser degree. They were not very much interested in establishing the colonies in the same in North America the same way that the the British and even the Spanish did. Uh, they did have land here and there, but they were not. Um, they were mostly mostly traders. The British colonies, however. Uh, were fairly established, were attracted a lot of people from Britain, from England, and they were in several groups. The people that were trying to escape from prison uh, took refuge mainly in the south, such as in uh, uh, um, uh, Georgia, and people that were in pursuit of religious freedom came to Massachusetts, Rhode Island, what we know today mainly as New England and some of the mid-Atlantic states such as Pennsylvania and Maryland. The relationship between the Native Americans and the new settlers was pretty complex. Uh, of course, we have heard about Thanksgiving and this is just an example of how the natives received the newcomers. But this pretty much changed after a period of time. The native th people were subjected at some point to treatment less than, we would say, uh, pleasant treatment by the, by the, by the Europeans. And um, they were involved in agriculture. Now, in the north, agriculture was done by the by the the, the the settlers themselves. And but in the south, agriculture required a much larger labor force. So, in order to satisfy the demand for labor the settlers turned first to the Native Americans and also to indentured servitude. In other words, they would bring people from Europe to work as servants, as indentured servants, but that did not work out very well, so eventually they figured it would be better to bring black, African, black Africans to work, and this as this continued and developed into what we know today as the as as the origins of slavery in the Americas. Of course, the background to 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 slavery was not totally unknown. However, the type of slavery that existed in the Americas was not at all like the slavery, the institution of slavery that existed in so sub-Saharan. Africa or in the ancient world or in the Islamic lands. The difference here was that slavery in the Americas was chattel slavery and basically what that means is that the slave was not considered a human being. Of course this was not the case in the Islamic world and even many places in Africa from where the slaves were brought. 
by 16 by the 1600s the safe slave population in the West Indies for example had exceeded the number of whites there of course we have to keep in mind that all types of slavery slavery in general uh, is built on exploitation the date of the first importation of slaves to North America is given as 1619 with the importation of slaves to Jamestown and of course there were slaves that were imported to other parts of the Americas mainly the West Indies and Brazil and other parts of South America um, now the New World plantation was as we said earlier based entirely on slavery and this had a great effect on other parts of the world including West Africa Western Europe and this impact is felt even till today this brings us to the close of this preview of the section and we'd like to leave you here with just here's a picture a diagram of how slaves were packed in slave ships to come across from Africa to the Americas as you can see it was not a pleasant sight and at the end would like for you to consider some of the questions and topics that we will present here and we will have a discussion of these further so this is one and we will just go over some of the review questions please read them and be prepared to discuss them in class and also for your assessment I will just go through these very quickly and give you a chance to read them thank you for listening and we'll see you in class soon thank you